<laughs> Welcome to the show, guys. My name is Dylan. This is Austin. And I'm a guitarist and a singer, and he is a drummer and a drummer. And I drum. <laughs> he does hit the keys every once in a while. And he also can play guitar, but chooses to uh, do what he gets paid for. I choose to look at it. Would you look at it? Would you look at it? Stand to, uh, yeah, I look at my guitar. Anyways, now we can, uh, right now, uh, we can write music. We have new stuff. And uh, we can write music on the spot if we want to. But the problem is, is that a majority of what we write is like stuff that we would never play. Because the style that yeah. I write in is very specific <laughs> to me. Yeah, and it's very, oh, well, here's a 5-6 part, here's a 7-24, here's this shit. 7-24, dude, that's a sick trick. <laughs> One thing he really likes to do in his writing is... Uh, Add a beat where it shouldn't be? Yes. <laughs> He'll be like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, like, I don't know, it's just weird i did that by accident when we wrote that song in uh chicago yeah because i was like i looked over it and i was like oh this is why this is why austin had such a hard time because like recorded it you improvised the drums on the spot and then we had to re-record it later but in the video i actually had to cut out sections because the beats just though they were musical they did not have a rhythm that made sense like it just didn't feel good it was really weird, yes. So I was like... <laughs> it's like... Dun, 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 and that was normal, but I added an extra beat. So it's... <laughs> See, I jumped off beat. <laughs> yeah, and I I labeled that one as Dylan tries to kill me. <laughs> it was so fun though. It was the most fun. It was really sick. Like we had set up. Well, besides the setup of it was god awful. But we were in Chicago and we went to a, uh, whatever fountain that was. The uh, Birmingham Fountain. Yeah. Because the song's name is actually called the Birmingham Breakdown. So we. We took my drum set and his guitar stuff, and we lugged it so far. You would not think it, it was the closest that you could get a car to that fountain. We and could it, not find a closer spot. Like, we had to pick up all the gear, move it, like, 100 feet in front of us, drop it, and then one person watch it, and then just keep funneling gear over. And some dude, they had those guys that were on uh, the little bikes that you'd sit in, and they ride you around. Dylan went and asked him, like, how much for you to help us carry this drum stuff over here? Yes. He said, like, 40 bucks. And we're yeah. like, fuck that. It was, it was way more. It, I think it was $40, but it was literally like. I think he told me 40 Yeah. It was like 100 feet. That was it. 20 bucks, I would have paid it. <laughs> yes, because, like, dude, I remember. We went. So uh, let's explain that story from the beginning, kind of. I mean, the, when it comes to that part, we just lugged it. You yeah. know, we. We got there, dropped it off, did our video shoot, got a lot of people looking at us. I and mean, there was photographers and everything around there because Birmingham yeah. Fountain is uh, one of the biggest. A lot of weddings, too. A lot of weddings. There was like three or four weddings. They're all in the background of our videos. If you want to see that video, it's on our page. Please subscribe, by the way, because you know you want to. <clears throat> yes. At least I want him to. Anyways, uh, we go to the Birmingham. The whole, we'll start with the beginning of the story first. Where were we, where were we intending to go? Uh, we intended I, to go somewhere. Uh, we it, didn't we? Yeah, I think we were supposed to go somewhere. And maybe like the flights got booked or something. Yeah, yeah. And we, we just decided we we're going to take a day trip to Chicago and write yeah. a song. It was five hours because <clears throat> we were planning on taking the three days to go do anything, anyways. Like we were just like, okay, we want to go to. I really don't remember where we were trying Me to neither. go. But we were trying to go somewhere. Most likely, it was New York because it's our favorite place to go. And then. All, everything got booked. Couldn't get out that way. Couldn't fly anyways. And we just... I I just remember going, man, you just want to go to like Chicago and see if we can write a song in a day? Mm. I don't know if you said it or I said it. I think it was me. I think it probably was. And I was just like, let's just go to Chicago, see if we can write a song in a day, and then come back. And uh, we ended up doing that. 
which was insane. But we were in a Starbucks for like four hours. Yes, writing we were a song <laughs> for four hours. So we we go to. Uh, we go, we come out of the airport, go to the truck. As we're going to the truck, I said, let's do that. We go to pick up your drum set. I don't know if it was at my house. I don't think it was. We picked up your drum set. Yeah. We went to my house and I think we tore it down. We took, yeah. And then we I, were at the airport and then we had to drive. Like we weren't able to fly. And then we went and thought of that and got all of our stuff. Yeah. 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 Got, uh, yeah. So we went to your house, picked up everything that you had. And it was funny because your parents were like, Hey, what are you doing? Where are you going? And <laughs> You were like, I'm going to Chicago. I love you. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> and uh, it was just funny because we got so lucky on a bunch of, not, I, I shouldn't say super lucky on a bunch of spots, but uh, we got really lucky that your drum set fit under my cover. Yes. <clears throat> I have a, like a ton of cover <clears throat> that's rollable. Barely. Barely fit. It barely fit. It could close completely with his drum set, bass drum in its case in my bed, which is so good to know. For future things we got to do that again yeah for sure and so we pick up his stuff we go back pick up my laptop i think i might have already had it pick up my guitar which was this one which i just gotten that's why i was writing seven string stuff and uh go to chicago check the entire thing out i see the bean for the first time we start filming because we were really into filming vlogging specifically we did blog that every major trip we've done we've vlogged we need to do new york again have to. I know. Dude, I had a director's cut. I, I don't have it anymore. I know I deleted it, but there's a version of the New York trip that is 25 minutes long. There's another version that is an hour and a half. Yep. And it was just extra of everything. But I never, I don't think I ever exported it. I didn't finish it. Yeah. Uh, but I did cut it down to all the way to that. Anyways, so we go, we go all the way to Chicago takes five hours to get there and then we, i don't remember where we went where did we stay we stayed in somewhere like sketch as fuck uh yeah we it was a red roof inn it was a red roof inn in the middle of a neighborhood yeah how do it you was remember a, that? it was weird was that the was that the same trip as the the lights and all that stuff no it was a red roof inn okay no i'm thinking of uh i'm thinking of houston it's when i went to houston the red roof inn was when we went to like a back alley like we're in the back alley and we were just like, there's, we were counting it. There's like 15 grand worth of equipment in that room. We were where, like, uh, where were we whenever we did, uh, I had the lights and I was doing the long exposure stuff. That wasn't, was that the Chicago one? Yes. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. That was definitely Chicago. Cause we had our own rental. No, I had my truck. Yeah. Cause we had to, yeah, we had your truck and I had those lights and. We also had all my drums, I guess. We had stayed there that night, stayed at a red roof, and then uh, I had my lights, and we were doing the long exposure outside. Which the long exposure was really cool. We couldn't get it to get, like, a super crisp image because I just can't stand still enough. Yeah. You have to be extremely still, or you edit, you take a picture without the person and with the person. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, you have to, you have to just photo edit that kind of look. It was if that was difficult, but we go all the way up there. We checked out the bean, met a guy named Mister. I can't remember. He was the dude who was like <laughs> his whole his old job is filming wedding, yeah, or photography for wedding. Wasn't he from stuff. a different country too? N no, he might have been from London. I don't remember. He was trying to network with us. He's a super nice guy. He was really like subtle about it. He was just like, oh, there's people with cameras and like a lot of gear. Uh, let me go say hi to them. And he was like super nice. Got a message from him later. He was like surprised to see how small our following was. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. That's besides the point. His following was great. And like he actually does very professional looking YouTube videos. But he, I don't think he's consistent enough to grow it that fast. Yeah. <clears throat> the toughest part. Very much so. Uh, thumbnails. They're the toughest part. <clears throat> yes. Anyways, the, uh, so we go up there. We meet that guy. Go to the bean. And then we scout for locations. I know that we did not, we had no plan. We had no plan of like, where are we going to go? Nope. Zero plan at all to do anything really. And we saw the fountain because I was just like, that's huge. Okay, let's go up here. And what we usually do when we go to cities specifically is we will explore the entire city to find either shot locations or to vlog. And we found some pretty rough areas. 
Yeah. Like that, dude, that long alleyway that was like <clears throat> under the tram. That yeah, was just that garbage everywhere. Garbage everywhere. That was, that part was a little disgusting. And if we would have been there at night, a whole different story. <laughs> There's a reason why we didn't. Uh, so we, we hung out there for the day. And then we went and got some like pizza from the other. It was like Chicago style pizza because we had to. Uh, and then we found the rich area by accident. Because I don't even we remember your, that. We went to your Chicago shoes place or whatever it was. Oh, uh, yeah. The very expensive shoe stores that everyone is. It was days. right. And it was in the it was in the very expensive district. We walked around there and then we walked out and like we were like, whoa, there's like really high dollar shops here. And not only that, the road's really nice, and, like, everything's clean, clean. Do you remember a lot about that trip more than I do? That's because you've been all over the fucking U.S. <laughs> <laughs> Yours is a blur. Eventually, so we took the tram because we take a tram on every single one we go to. If the tram's available, we'll take it. Always. Got us from down kind of like midtown Chicago to more uptown towards that rich area right next to the beach. I do remember us struggling to get on that because we had to have the phone app with yeah, whatever on like it. Yeah, like a metro, yeah. like some metro thing. That was... I do remember that part. And then after we get through the metro thing and we get we get on, uh, we were like, dude, it's it was dense. I was surprised at how many people were on it in the middle of the day, in the middle of the week. It was like a very bizarre thing. And then I was surprised at like... <sighs> I see why they say the Chicago tram is rough because there's just a lot of people. I mean, there is are there are it's a huge city, so there's like, there's homeless people too. It wasn't that bad. I thought it was normal. It felt like DC has the highest prestigious tr- mm-hmm. metro. Uh, you know their their sub their subway is very nice and clean. I just remembered one other thing about this is like just. Out of pure coincidence that we went to Chicago the same weekend as Riot Fest. Oh, yeah. And we didn't go to Riot Fest. That's why we were struggling to find a good place to stay. Because a lot of people were there for Riot Fest and all the good hotels were booked. Yeah, they were booked everywhere. We didn't care. Trust me when I say we are not picky when it comes to hotels. The cheapest is the best. <laughs> yes. I don't care. If you, if you can stay in a hostel, which people are really nice. Stay I don't mind hostel. hostels at all. Hostels are great. The LA and the New York ones are great. Even the Georgia Hotel. And the Georgia Hotel was not that nice. I was like looking at it and then we went to that 802, local 802 or whatever. Yeah. That thing was nice. I was like, oh, it's different. And it was like the same price or maybe like 10 bucks more. Yeah, that was a good one. Anyway, that, so we go there. Uh, first of all, I almost just wrecked my truck right out the gate because there's this down. What, what, remember the parking garage? Yes, this that parking, parking garage, garage we go terrible. down. So it's like on a main strip next to the bean and it's right there. And I go down and I was like, oh, we might not make it. We might not make it. We might not make it. It was so close. And then like everywhere I drove, I was like, damn, it is low in here. But I was good the whole time. I don't really even... skinny parking spaces. Too. Oh, my God. They were as narrow as you could get. And I was like, I have a huge truck. Why am I down here? <laughs> it was the only thing that was close to the bean because that's what we were trying to see. And uh, of course, the first thing you did was flick the bean. <laughs> hell yeah i did <laughs> like the bean as you must always and then we got sold something from some chinese guy he was like take this bracelet i can't speak english even though he could <sighs> he's a liar he just wasn't talking i hate those nah, fine. They're, oh try this on it looks good and then ask for money immediately after yeah do you remember the guys in uh la when we were on the uh the uh the star the hollywood walk yep and they were like, oh, man, look at this CD. Look at this CD. It's your CD, man. Look at that. Look, I'll even sign it for you. What's your name? He puts like, own name, my own name on it. I was like, thanks, man. He's like, yeah, that'll be like, what was it, like $5? Something like that. I was like, dude, I'm not paying for this. I don't. I, you're giving it to me. He was yeah. like, oh, man, man, I can't be doing that. He took it right out of my hand. I was like, I'm not going to. You're not going to hustle me into paying you money when I literally clearly don't want this. Yeah, like anyone from L.A. that has like walked by the the hall of like the walk of fame you know that they probably swarm that place you've probably dealt with them many times but it was just such bullshit because they act like it's oh here's you here's your cd like i want you to listen to this go listen to it listen to my music yeah it's like okay cool yeah i'll give it a listen and then immediately is like pay me right now pay me right now but it was like you took it straight from your hands yeah, and I was like, oh, man, I don't, I don't trust me. I will throw this thing straight on the ground right now. 
I was, which makes no sense to me. He's trying to make a dollar off of like his music. I get it. And he's trying to like sell CDs that are like they were blank CDs. Yeah. You know, they were blank CDs that were burned on. So that was like, I was like, okay, this is just a normal CD and you're going to sign something I don't want because I don't know who you are. I'm visiting. You're in my face. Get out of my face, please. <laughs> and then I'm just like, they're streaming music everywhere now. Just stream it. Like, yeah. give me a card with your QR code is way more likely to buy it then. And then I talked to one guy who was actually like, he was down in the subways of uh, New York. Matt, do you remember that? We were in the subway in New York and we actually found, it was either New York or LA where I actually, that sounded gross. I thought you actually fell, like I thought you were falling through the floor. Anyways, <laughs> we go through a subway and this guy comes up to me and he he's trying to sell music too, but he was being super respectful about yeah. it. Yeah. And he was like, you know, it's like it's two bucks, man. Uh, you know, I don't you don't have to buy anything, but here's my here's my Spotify thing if you want to listen to it. And I listen I took it from him and I was like, you know what, I'll buy a CD. I was like, You're not like abrasive and I like the way you like the way you are. You're not trying to like force sell me something. Yeah. Nice guy. I don't I uh I think I listened to his song and I was like, Yeah, it's pretty decent. And that that's what that was. That was it. But anyway, we uh we go to we we park down there in the parking lot and I'm like terrified that we're gonna lose all our shit because he's got we got fifteen thousand dollars worth of stuff in the car. And uh, we had so much. That's literally insane that we had that much. And it was just someone could have just gotten a knife and got Yeah. Two cameras. It was like uh my A seven S three, your I don't even know if you brought your camera. Um, All of our attaching gear, my so. gimbal I just got, like everything. So much stuff was in there, and when, luckily it was all good. But so we go down there, we look around, and I'm like, okay. So we go to the Red Roof Inn. We're tired. When we got to the beach after the we uh, after we went to the rich area, we got to the beach, and my feet were just pulsing because we'd been walking so much that day so much we'd been walking so 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 much and uh, i just remember putting my feet in the sand going oh my god this is the greatest feeling ever <laughs> i think it was, it was a pretty good day that day too so i don't even remember which uh which great lake were we on uh michigan? i think michigan anyway so it's near it's the one near chicago <laughs> yeah <laughs> that yeah, one that one anyways uh we go to the beach it like feels amazing i don't give a shit at this point i just sit down in the sand get sand all up in the only clothes that we have uh, and then we walked into the freezing cold lake and it felt amazing. It felt so good. You get so used to it so quickly. No, it Dude, it was great because my feet were hurting and I was wearing like Vans. It's probably blazers. good on your feet, but everywhere else is Vans or Blazers. To it. me, it was fine because it was like you got used to it really quickly and something about the the lake was different. Like I got used to it quicker than salt water for some reason. I guess it's because it's moving a little bit less than the ocean is. I'm not sure, but it felt like I got used to it much faster than normal water. I I couldn't tell you on that one. I, I, I remember cold that. water is cold water to me. I hate it. <laughs> you don't get used to it? No. We had somebody swimming in front of us, and it was like 50-degree water. Was there a dog that day that was swimming? Yeah, yeah, there was. There was a dog outside, and they were just throwing the ball, and he's going to get it and coming back. And then it was over and over and over. It was that really was cool. Fun to watch. That was really cool. We spent... Dude, we spent a long time there. That's the funny thing. We spent like at least an hour there. And I called my mom and everything. I was like, hey, I'm tired. <laughs> we didn't even look for a like a place to stay for until it was almost dark. Yeah, the sun started <laughs> going down and we we're like, maybe we should find a spot. <laughs> we found one spot because Riot Fest was going on and we were like, okay, we'll take it. We don't care. It was like $114, I think. It's amazing that yeah. I know exactly that price. <laughs> I know. I... <laughs> Like I said, you remember a lot more of this than I do. Yeah, yeah. So, Red Roof Inn. Next day, I was like, okay, we got up early in the morning. Get up early in the morning. Go straight to a Starbucks for some coffee. And I was like, dude, this is the only place they have, like, Wi-Fi and electricity where you can stay here for a lengthy amount of time. Mm -hmm. This is where we're going to have to do it. It's the only place that we could think to do it. So, we did it outside. On this little patio that they had that was pretty nice. And we there, we spent there. We were there for at least... I think we were there for two hours, three hours, but I don't think we were there for four hours. I want to say it was almost four. It might I have think... been like a rest at first, and then we started writing, because I remember writing all of it, and you were like, you just got to the point, because you were, 
you were basically just sitting there while I was playing. Yeah. Because you couldn't really do anything else at that time. And we were on a time constraint of like, okay, write the song, wrote the song, got to find a spot, found the spot, got to shoot the spot, shot the spot, got to make sure that we can get our shit before it gets dark. Yeah. <laughs> that was really fucking Dude, cool. Dude, it was chaos. It was so fast. Uh, we write the song, get out of there. Everybody's staring at us. We don't give a shit because we stand out drastically. Comes out of Starbucks. They don't care. We're not disturbing anybody. We're not trying to anyways. And then we just were like, let's go to the Birmingham Fountain. So we go to the Birmingham Fountain. We go around it 10 times looking for a fucking parking spot. And then there are there are uh, parking meters all around. So we just mm -hmm. got it to a parking meter. And we got to like the last one that we could find. And it was all really far down. So we dropped our stuff off. There's a light that is right before. It's like right in the middle, right in front of the Birmingham Fountain. There's also some crazy shit that happened. You remember all the crazy shit that was happening? What was the crazy shit? I'll, I'll let you know. I'll let you know. So we get there. <clears throat> I remember something happening. Yeah, there was crazy shit happening. Uh, we get there, park. Actually, I parked in front of the light, like literally street light. And I was like, I'm going to get off right here. I'm just going to pull over. I'm just going to do it. Pull off and we unload. And I was just like, good luck. Good luck, Austin. Now you remember. Yes. Don't worry about it. So... <laughs> So we just unload, get all your stuff over there, and then I pull it to somewhere where we can uh, get every, you know, park my truck without it getting stolen or yeah. towed. Uh, I come all the way back down. We start shooting the music video. You're shot. And then we did me. I'm shot. And then uh, it was getting pretty decently dark at that point. I wouldn't say dark, but it was getting close because... Right at the end, like right, right as we pulled up, I mean, right as we pulled up, there was a cop that went through that park that mm -hmm. went around it as in like he, he checked it out and then left through the park, which you're not supposed to do. I'm assuming cops are the only one who can do that. No, for sure. He's not supposed to drive there. Uh, get everything set up, shoot everything. And then we were like, okay, we're exhausted. You just got done playing drums for like an hour solid. Outside next to all these people. All these awful. people. And then I have to play all my parts. And I played all my parts. And then we take and we're just like, all right, we're both fucking exhausted. Because not only it's very active, there's a lot of activity when it comes to shooting film too. So I'm moving everywhere as much as I can to get the most shots. And then I have to get I have to figure out how to line it up as you do it. Uh luckily the crowd was cool. Everybody was cool with it. Nobody was like getting you weren't getting on anyone's yeah. nerves, apparently. Which, Which was is surprising. Really yeah. I know. I was a lot of people shocked. were like, Woo, yeah, keep going. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. Because they knew what we were doing. I mean, it was very obvious. But if the cop had come through, I was like, man, there's probably permits that are required for this. There's probably like sound ordinances, you know, ordinances. There's a, I was like, I don't know if we're going to be able to do this, but we're going to fucking try. So get it set up, get it shot, shoot my parts. And then we have to get all of our shit back to my truck. So I have to get my truck. I run down, get my truck drive it around the park again, back to the spot that I was at. At that point, it had gotten dark enough to where the park was closing. And when I mean it was closing, I mean that where I parked originally to get our stuff off, I had to park at again. And there was 15 tow trucks. I parked behind the tow trucks. <laughs> 15 tow trucks. The guy was like, the guy turned around. He was like, he was like, what are you doing? Like, what are you actually doing? Are you trying to get towed right now? So <clears throat> I just talked to the guy and I'm like, dude, I'm my stuff's a hundred feet away. I'm just trying to get it on here and go. I am not trying to stay here. Please just let me stay here. The dude was like, all right, it's fine. Whatever. You know, I was just like, can you hold, like, just hold the spot for me, please. I was basically begging because I'm like, at his mercy, he has a tow truck. In front of me. As soon I mean, as you hey, start going to get the stuff, he just hooks up dude, real quick and drives off. Immediately, I was like illegally parked. Immediately illegally parked. But he was super nice about it. I was like, yeah, we're exhausted. So we we I book it to you. I was like, break down. Let's go. And then we had to carry all of your stuff pretty much individually. Everything yeah. that we carried was completely individual. And your fucking symbols, man, are so fucking heavy. Your symbols and your symbol stands. Yeah. God damn. That wore me out. Like, I actually would have, like, I'd have to take a break every couple feet, every, yeah. like, 15 feet. I was like, God, was, That's how it is with the bass drum. You're like, oh, you're just, like, you're leaning your whole body, like, not even using your arm. You're just using your lean to it hold your... It'd been so long since I put that much effort into like 
getting something somewhere. I was like, good God. And then we had to do it like three more times because we had to go back and get it and go back and get it. <clears throat> the original tow, tow, tow truck driver that I had talked to was gone. There was four other tow truck drivers in front of him. And I was just like, I have to talk to someone to not get towed. The guy was gone. The guy who was vouching for me, everyone else was going to get towed. Like they had set tow truck drivers there every day to get all the people around out of the park, which is like, I was like, ah, ah, <laughs> I'm so not ready for that. We get everything loaded up and we take off and it is wild. Shit is going crazy. Mexican like the, Independence Day. The people were going nuts there. I don't know what was going on. Horns honking, people driving like absolute crazy in the middle Mexican of Chicago. Mexican flags already. everywhere on massive trucks. And then, yeah, Mexican flags everywhere on massive trucks. And apparently it was like Mexican Independence Day and it's something to do with, I actually think something was to do with like Mexico like beat someone in the soccer, in soccer. I don't know. It was something like that, that part. too. And, uh, it, dude, it was nuts. It was so crazy. People were honking, honking, driving as dangerously as they possibly could. There were thousands of people everywhere. I guess maybe like the fest had like come to a close, but there was suddenly a ton of cars. Mm -hmm. And Chicago has narrow roads in that area. So I, I like we just witnessed a car crash. I forgot about that. that. Tesla, yeah. I, totally I was literally that. just about to say it. The Tesla that got like hit and run. It was hit in the rear end, and then that had to happen, and then. I had to drive in this in this big truck through all this, and we saw a Ferrari F12. I forgot about that. Yeah. My fucking dream dream car was in my sight, and I felt like kind of bad because I was like, this guy probably thinks I'm trying to mug him. He got in the middle of the road and took photos. I was like, I got you. It's my favorite car. I've never seen one. And we get out. Uh, we get out of there, and it's like we're exhausted, exhausted, and we still got to drive five hours to get home. And then we get hit with every tow, every toll in the world i didn't know how many tolls there were in chicago chicago is terrible i probably spent 20 bucks just in tolls I, I would say probably around there god and uh so after all that we shoot everything spent all the time that we spent there and then as mexican independence they just go nuts people are going crazy we leave get on the road and then we hit a gas station where we just had to <laughs> this is the last part of the story we just had to get some like food and gas. Like that was it. And we get down there. We man. got Smoothie King. Oh, we did. That was the first time we got Smoothie King. Yeah. I forgot about that one. That's another part. Okay, we'll say we'll we'll give that one. Smoothie King was like a <clears throat> blessing. We'd driven for like three and a half hours, tired, had like both super exhausted. We got medium Smoothie King smoothies, and it was literally perfect. It hit the spot, the absolute spot. <sighs> like we could not stop. The best smoothie at that moment. That it was it was perfect. I was so good. I was like, Smoothie King is the best thing that's ever existed. <laughs> ever existed. We were like, what, 20, 30 minutes before close? Yeah. Something, something, something like, like that. that. We just made it. And I was like, let's just try this. And I was like, all right, cool. And it was freaking amazing. So we get off, go get some gas somewhere, and we just get mean mugged. Oh, Do you remember yeah. that? Yeah. Just that's stared down. By and I'm not trying to be racially insensitive, but this is what ethnicity they were. They were Latin. Uh, they were of Latin descent of some type, but they were like, I'm getting gas, and they're staring at me. Yeah, they were not about us being there. They like he was going to get like we both went inside to go get some stuff, and like I ran into two Latin kids, and they seemed fine. They seemed like just kids. They didn't give a crap. But this family, man. I was getting to the point where I was getting pissed. <laughs> I was hey, like, hey, dude, what the fuck are you looking at? Like, pretty much. I don't remember exactly what I said, but I, I mean, I was, I don't know. If, I don't remember what I was going to say, but I eventually got him to turn away. Mm -hmm. I was like, do you need something? You know, like, what do you want? Why are you staring at us? I don't remember that, but I do remember literally he, we park, he's watching. We go inside, watching, come out, dude, just like, just staring at us it's like that guy and his wife were just watching us the whole time i was like dude we're getting gas what is your problem it was pissing me off man but i was like this is not good this guy is like trying to kill us He's trying to intimidate me but i was like i was like we're a lot bigger than this old man <laughs> i was oh, like i don't care at that. all and he had like three other family members with him but i was like nah we're fine get out and we go and then we ended up editing the video editing the vlog and editing the actual music video itself. And that was the first song that we released that was 
It wasn't actually the first song we released because Brutal Poodle was technically it. <laughs> Brutal Poodle. Brutal you don't Poodle. know that one? Go look at that one. Yeah, it's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that was whenever I told him just to just detune your guitar like crazy yeah, for this like, breakdown. It was probably in drop triple B. <laughs> Really, really funny low, but it was just because we like we did a video where we completely redid this drum set, and uh, it's still in the same configuration. But yeah. we redid that drum set, and then we released a song called "Brutal Poodle" with it, kind of showing off the drum set. And then go home, edit the videos, and everything like that. And it was a it was a really funny experience. It was it was wild how it's wild how if you have a goal in mind, you will push yourself way too hard sometimes because yeah. good lord that music video hurt oh it did it hurt to do that Bad. my back was killing me and my back when it comes to like like normal activities i don't have a just commonly hurting back yeah and i was just like oh my god dude so uh, getting dw 9000s don't get them <laughs> <laughs> do not but get that i do think like the task that we put on ourselves was like like to this day, thinking back then, like we're gonna drive five, six hours, we're gonna write a song and film the music video for it in a day, and then we actually did it. Yeah, oh, I couldn't so believe cool. it. Couldn't believe that we did it, honestly. And we drove back, I think, in a day because we only spent one day. Battery exhausted. But is it totally out? Yes. All right, that's cool. Uh, yeah, we only spent one day, one day there, and then we drove back because we were poor. <laughs> 